This is the servo tube STA1104. Um, this is the coil for this little linear motor. And uh, this is the magnet. It's actually a, a tube with magnets in it. Um, it's pairs of north and south pole magnets, just like a linear motor. And inside here, there's a bearing at each end. Um, so the aluminum slides across the plastic material bearing. Um, I don't think there's a lot of side loading on it, but uh, it allows it to move freely. It's a very clever device here. It reads the magnets for sine and cosine. And so the circuit in here, which we had helped develop at one time, but we've now sold this uh, off to uh, Dunker, Dunker Motrin, Dunker Motor. Um, anyway, so the sine, cosine, and, and feedback goes back to a drive. Uh, this is the Copley ACJ-S. Um, this is an older, uh, uh, small, low-cost, can-open RS-232 drive for precision control. And uh, it works really good with this linear motor here. So we'll take a look at this motor and these drives. So I found this uh, data sheet for the STA-1104 on the Dunker Motrin webpage. And uh, it's got some healthy continuous and a lot of peak torque, short periods of time, one volt peak to peak sine cosine, six microns of repeatability. That's not accuracy. Accuracy is based on the pairs of magnets. Um, we've got good data here for the currents and the electromechanical time constants. Uh, good dimensional data, rod lengths. Um, good information about the uh, feedback uh, connections on this uh, D sub connector. Um, I'm using their their cable assembly here. Uh, that seems to work just fine. Uh, motor color wires and ordering guide. So that's pretty good. Um, I'm using an ACJ dash S option for sine cosine, and I'm using an O9003. Um, you know, this is a 75 volt motor at the most. Uh, I'm running on 26 volts, so do not exceed 75 volts. Um, there's another range of drives. Uh, these are the Copley, EtherCat, and Can Open. These are the plus drives. They also come with sine cosine. So there's packages like uh, a module for integrating into a system, a two axes module for two axes of control. And uh, I'm actually working with an EtherCat application to drive two of these motors in a synchronous manner, kind of like a gantry with cross coupling. So this is a cool drive. Uh, I don't think we've implemented any uh, position correction tables in the drive yet, but you know that may be a possibility. Um, you never know. We'll see what happens. So to get started, uh, I used CME2 version 7.0. I'm going to call this the retro CME2. Um, the cool thing about it is there's a servo tube button. So I just push the servo tube button, pick my motor, warning about 75 volts again. Position, velocity, current, can, whatever mode of operation your control architecture needs. Malt emulated output. I think we even did an ACJ once that did emulated haul output. So, you know, there's many possibilities with this thing. And uh, clear faults. Um, so I'm connecting to the drive for the first time. There's the default uh, interpolation rate. Um, you know, maybe there could be more interpolation, but hey, you know, why have more res resolution with for repeatability than is possible or accuracy than is possible? Anyways, the data comes in already. I didn't have to enter this. It's all part of the old 7.0. Um, we can calculate the initial tuning parameters, and we can take a look at, uh, you know, can we enable this thing and jog it? So I, I haven't done anything. I, have, I haven't done any tuning, and I get a kind of not very stiff, a little bit spongy loop here. Um, but we, we're going to hook up CME2 version 7.1 to see how to configure this thing. Um, you know, after we load up the data and save the flash, then um, let's see how it's really configured. 
uh, in the new CME2 version 7.1 that uh, does not have the uh, servo tube button. So change settings. This is a brushless linear motor. It has a low frequency analog feedback and it has a hall type analog. So this is real important uh, for configuring the commutation and the interpolation on the sine cosine. So that's, an, that's a critical factor setting in 7.1 if you're using the new, uh, new software that does not have the servo tube button. Everything else uh, pretty much looks the same here. That's good. We can see our motor data. That's the same. Uh, we can see the interpolation rate. I'm just going to go down the, the list here, uh, look at the current loop bandwidth. It's a linear motor. How much current loop bandwidth do you need? You're only going through so many electrical cycles per second. 400 hertz is fine. We don't want to overdo it. Um, there's probably a 350 hertz limit anyways for the velocity loop based on the sine cosine filters. Uh, so we have to watch that. There's a speed limit, some gain parameters, position loop default parameters, that's all nice. Some trajectory limits, crazy accelerations, some pretty high speeds. We can crank that up if we want. So just uh, going through the tuning practice here with a, a servo tube. With a small signal, we can see the gains of the current loop. If the integral is too high, then you get a little integral wind up. You want to back that down a little bit. Uh, so I can get a little bit more current loop bandwidth out of it. You know, there's some inductance here, and it's not a big power supply, so maybe i got a little, little slew rate limit here. So I could probably get a kilohertz current loop bandwidth out of this if I want, which is nice if I'm pushing the velocity loop real hard. So, yeah, there's a, there is a pole output filter at 200 hertz, low-pass Butterworth. I'm going to do a single pole. Um, this is older... Uh, drive configuration. The plus drive has fancy filters and more configuration, so um, I'm just limited by the old ACJ here, which is fine. We're able to do really good control with that. So off to the velocity, auto setup checkbox, apply to velocity, velocity limit. Let's just knock this down to some earthly reasonable value here. I mean, it could do it, but that's a lot of acceleration. These are the default gains, um, velocity parameters, and I like to look at channel 3, current actual, and we'll take a look at this, um, see what happens. So, yeah, maybe we should move it to the center. Let's accelerate a little bit more. So we'll do 10,000 for X cell and D cell. Uh, when the drive is disabled, we can move the rod to the center. All right, there's a normal profile. So let's check out the uh, the gain limit. Double it till it oscillates, then cut it in half. I hear the oscillations. I see it. 600. So this should back it down out of the oscillations. Yeah, I don't see much oscillation in the current loop. Pretty good steady state error. Pretty good getting to speed. So let's try. See if we can over integrate a little bit. And there's a little bit of integral wind up there. I'm just going to cut it in half and say that's pretty good for now. And um, let's stop that. We'll go to a profile tab, auto set checkbox, channel three, current actual, and uh, 4096. 4096. That's the uh, interpolation off of a magnetic pair length, 25.6. So I guess it goes 25.6 millimeters for 6.25 mic micron repeatability. So just checking out how far we plan to see this thing move. We moved an inch in the forward direction, or 25.4. Uh, I could use a little bit more integral here. So let's go back in the negative direction. Uh, let's give it a little bit more integral there. So, 
Yeah, I'm not over integrating here, so I think this is it's good. Let's do that again. 40, 81, 92. So let's make a fast move in this direction. We're almost getting to our profile limit. Let's just set this to one meter a second. Go back out. There we go. So we're hitting the speed there. So just be careful here. There's no physical limits attached to this thing. Uh, that'll launch like a rocket or a bullet. I'm going to make a four inch move here and let's see if this occurs. That's not too, too fast. Um, let's see what this puppy can do. Yeah, the tuning looks pretty good. A little over integral there. I might take that integral gain back down to where I had it. Um, the system moves a little bit because I don't have it bolted down. Let's go in the negative direction. And uh, let's make a really fast move. Let's see if I can do 2,000 in the positive direction. Yeah, that did it. Yeah, that's that's pretty good. Um, I need to increase my X cell and D cell. No load here, so that should be able to do it. And uh, put a, a limit here so I don't exceed that limit. Faster XL, faster D cell. I'm going to have to go a further distance to actually get to this speed. So, yeah, I'm hitting uh, 2,000. 2,500. Well, I can do that still. And uh, my currents are hitting 6 amps. So, let's see if I can get up to 9 amps with this sucker. So, I want to go in positive direction. Fingers crossed. Hope that's the right way. Whoa! <laughs> Launched it. Yeah, that's too fast. Following error. I was hitting a limit. Following error built up. Uh, probably clipping the uh, peak current limit there. Oh, I got 12 amps. Uh, let's bring that XL back down here. A little bit more reasonable. Disable, clear false. No, oh, there's no, no magnet in there to do control with. Clear false. All right, we got the uh, feedback cooking now. There's that move. Dang it. A little building following error, not quite hitting the speed, but almost. Uh, we'll take a look at the velocity limit based on the voltage. And voltage terminal servo and event warning voltage limited we could move in the positive direction Ooh, almost launched at that time yeah so that speeds a little a little too high uh, we're starting to hit the uh, power supply limit there so we'll bring it back down to something else All right, let's see if we can do. Yeah. Uh, still hitting a little limit. So the back EMF on this motor is 4 volts per meter per second, uh, plus some IR drop. So, yeah, geez, if I had 10 amps and 4.9 ohms, that's like 50 volts. So, if I had a 75 volt supply, I could go wicked fast. Um, I got some uh, IR drop and some voltage limit warning here. So these speeds are a little excessive for a 24 volt supply. But like I said, we can do 75 volts with this motor, so no reason to have a voltage limit. So here's a well behaved move with no limit. Uh, the following error comes down, plus or minus a count for two. 
and then uh, some error while we're excel and decel gets to stay.